Hi everyone, my name is Twinkle and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic. This is one of the most highly, highly, highly requested topic and I know I've taken so long. I was on a break, not complaining, but I have come back with such a fruitful video which is the salary structure for Cathay Pacific. Yes, Cathay Pacific is an airline based in Hong Kong. And in the past couple of days, there has been so many vacancies and a lot of you have been selected and also made it to the rounds, but need to know the comparison so to make a better choice of the airline. And for others who are aspiring to be uh, in Cathay Pacific as a cabin crew, this, going, this video is going to be very, very helpful because I'm going to give you exact how I do, I exact numbers and exact structure of uh, salary that you're going to earn, how you're going to be benefiting from their remuneration. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. And if you haven't started following me yet, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'll leave the link in the description box. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, like this video, because this motivates me only to do so much better. Let's get into the video. So let's start with uh, the salary structure. So the Cathay Pacific salary structure has two to three components that comes to you every single month. And that is basic salary and hourly monthly pay. Now, what is basic salary is that there is a minimum number of hours that you are supposed to get uh, remunerated for, which vary from airline to airline. For this airline, it's a minimum of 70 hours. And if you complete that, you will be getting your basic salary every single month, irrespective whether you complete, you get those hours or no. The, there is no deduction as written in their contract. Second component is if you do anything over and above that minimum hour uh, block, then you get paid for the extra number of hours that you've completed. For example, you do 80 hours, you get paid for those extra 10 hours, 80 minus 70, you get paid extra for those 10 hours. And the hourly pay for those extra hours is something, again, different that is added in your monthly salary. Plus, there is a special allowance which you get plus there is an induction pay that you get initially. Now, first of all, let's start with what happens during training. So let's start with uh, the first thing, which is your training. So the training period in Hong Kong for Cathay Pacific is seven weeks and you're entitled to get an induction pay during the time of your training. So in an induction pay, you get Hong Kong dollars 11,170 for the period of the training, whatever the amount uh, is there, it is on pro rata basis. And uh, you also get a special allowance. Now, what is special allowance? Special allowance is uh, like your accommodation allowance. So in case of Cathay Pacific, you get accommodation for 10 weeks from the date of joining. Now, this period can become shorter or longer, depends on the company. So as for the company for the first 10 weeks, which may change later, they are providing you 10 weeks of accommodation, right? And when they don't, they will be giving you an amount of 7,000 Hong Kong dollars every single month in lieu of that, which is again variable for the first year to until second year. This is the amount of 7,000 from the year third. Third year, it changes to 5,800 Hong Kong dollars, right? For example, if you don't get the accommodation for 10 weeks, you get it for eight weeks. So for the two weeks that you don't get the accommodation, you will be receiving the allowance on pro rata basis, which is whatever amount out of 7,000 divided by 30 into 14 days, whatever the amount comes in, comes into your salary, right? So this is how it works in case of training period and for the time period that they provide you accommodation transport, I am believing that they are not providing. And if they do, I if there is anyone who gets to know about this, please put it down in the comment section below and I will take it from there. Now, if you fail during the training, then from the last date of the result to the date until which you complete the other course, that second course or the second attempt of clearing the training, that period will be unpaid. You will not be provided with any induction pay, any special allowance. So it's going to be very heavy on you. So basically, in short words, you cannot afford to fail. If you do, then you are on your own. Nobody is going to provide you for anything. Let's talk also about determination policy. So during the first month of probation period, either you or the company can terminate the employment immediately without any notice. But after the first month of the probation period for the remaining probation period, a seven days notice period should be given either by you or the company to terminate your employment. 
and after the probation period completion if the termination happens then there is a clause of course you have to complete that which is going to be in your contract which is another topic altogether also once you start right i am assuming that until the period of probation until you are fixed in the company which is 6 months usually your basic salary and your hourly rate hourly uh, flying duty rate is different which is 9100 hong kong dollars which is your monthly basic salary when you start when you're in your probation period and you're not fixed and you're not permanent and your hourly rate right flying duty hourly rate is 120 hong kong dollars i'm also going to talk about it in a while from now when i explain you how the salary works so now let's talk about the monthly salary so monthly salary has two components one is your basic salary and other is your monthly productive pay now monthly salary is given on 25th of each calendar month is given in hong kong dollars and will be in your local hong kong bank and how is your monthly productive pay calculated now monthly productive pay is calculated by this formula which is actual flight duty hours minus minimum flight duty hours into flight duty hour rate so for example your actual flight duty hours are 80 and minimum flight duty hours that you're supposed to do in a month are 70 which is actually 70 for cathay pacific right and for which you are paid that basic pay for the chart of which i'm going to show in a while into the flight duty hour rate which for now is 120 so by that method your monthly productive pay will be 80 minus 70 which is 10 hours into 120 and that amount is going to be your monthly productive pay which is going to come in the following month's salary right after one month because you need time to calculate this amount and for example if the actual flight duty hours are less than the minimum duty hours for example you do 60 hours and the minimum is 70 then for that month no productive pay will be paid at all i hope that this is clear so far the idea of monthly productive pay now let's see what is the basic salary that you're going to get every single month um so far and it also varies as per ranks and is your on your screen now so flight duty as per rank the basic salary is hong kong 12600 for flight attendant hong kong dollars 18200 for a flight purser hong kong dollars 25200 for a senior purser and hong kong dollars 33250 for in flight manager i am also going to leave the hourly rate which is the flight duty hour rate per hour rate if you do something over 70 hours in a month then it is also given on the side which is 180 hong kong dollars if you're a flight attendant new joinee 260 hong kong dollars per hour for a flight purser 360 dollars per hour for a senior purser and 475 dollars per hour for an in flight manager and just for your reference one hong kong dollar is 10.64 indian rupees so you can do the math now another component that i want to talk about is how these duty hours are determined now let's discuss what all can fall under the category of duty hours so one component is the block hours for example you fly you have a flight of 5 hours 5 block hours will actually become your actual flight duty hours but apart from that you also have ground duties you also have reserve duties you also have non operative sectors right so ground duty hours are where you are not flying or probably you are on the standby or you are reserved for another flight so all these hours are also paid and if these hours are over and above your 70 hours then also they are considered but they have a different kind of math let's look into this chart now so for example you have already completed your 70 hours in a month but now you are doing extra hours so whatever one extra flying hour you do block hour which is known as a block hour 
that is counted as one actual flight duty hour and you are going to be paid 180 dollars for that extra hour now suppose you do one hour of a ground duty so that one hour is actually considered at 0.5 of actual flying duty hour which means you are going to get 90 dollars right for that now it also depends on your rank and i'm talking here about the flight attendant rank which is the entry level rank now for example you do a reserve duty you have an airport standby and you have one or two such duties so in this case if you have three reserve duty hours three hours three hours of that due reserve duty is considered as one actual flight duty hours if now you have six hours of re reserve duty then that will be considered as two actual flight duty hour so with that math for every three hour of reserve duty you will be paid 180 dollars per three hours of reserve duty are we clear and the other one is if you do one non-operative sector sometimes you're, there are some sectors of course where you're not supposed to operate as a flight crew and you are only sitting if so if any cabin crew is watching this video this is known as a dead heading so for someone who's a cabin crew this is also known as dead heading sometimes you are in the flight uh, flying as a passenger not really working and operating that sector so every single non-operative sector hour is also considered as 0.5 of actual flight duty hour so for example you have uh, probably one or uh, let's take it as four non-operative sector hours where you were sitting and not working even those will be considered as one actual flight duty hour right so for every one non-operative sector you are paid half of your actual flight duty hour which is 90 hong kong dollars again now this amount also changes as per the chart given below if you're promoted from a uh, flight attendant to flight purser then 115 percent of this flight duty hourly rate which is of the flight attendant will be the increment that you get and so on and so forth you can refer this chart this is only to calculate your flight duty hours which are of course different for different ranks now please note all the above may change from time to time without any prior notification or intimation so these are all subjective to change now i hope you've understood the salary structure carefully i know there are some different terms and i have gotten a lot of requests where people were not able to really understand what a specific term means and what can be uh, the meaning of or what can be the actual amount because there are so many different terms are given it is not very clear but it's not that difficult either and only in that case if you have any questions any specific questions about anything related to remuneration or salary you know the drill you can put down the questions in the comment section below and i will get back to you apart from that anyone else who has any other information about contract about the salary or about any other information or benefits related to anything Cathay pacific which uh, can benefit the other aspirants and uh, people who are already there please do the needful put all those information in the comment section below and we all can benefit from there itself um that's all for this video i hope you found this video very helpful we've waited a lot for this video and if you do don't forget to like this video share this video and subscribe to my channel i will see you in my next one till then take care and bye bye